I am on my Templar healer again, she's a Breton, and I'm getting her ready to start uh, front kiting in Asylum Sanctorium hard mode. Uh, we're going for the IR, or the Immortal Redeemer title, which is no death and speed run under 15 minutes. We have the speed run down, and we just are going for the no death. So normally, the front kiter will be in Zins and Martial Knowledge. Um, but if there is someone in your group already running Zins, you can switch that to Martial Knowledge and Gosmer is a, a good second set. Um, let's see. So I have on Martial Knowledge staves. I'm wearing Symphony. You don't have to as a front kiter. Bogdan will work, you know, or Sentinel, but I like the extra. You're not going to be giving this to many people. Basically the tank, the off tank, and the few DPS that's on the sides next to you, like in lanes 8 and lanes 1. You know, the pe people close to you that you heal. But it does help them with the resources in case, you know, the back kiter can't get them with the Symphony. And then I have on Gossamer on my body. And then for my jewelry, I have on Martial Knowledge. But I normally do Infused, um, but for the front kiter, I like Swift on two of them. So I just made, I got two extra rings, and I just transmuted them to Swift. It really, really makes a difference when you run around. You don't have to worry about getting caught in all that stuff and you know not have enough stamina or having to have on a special move that makes you go fast. So the Swift on two is really, really helped. As far as skills, I switch my combat prayer. You won't need that because you won't be healing the group. So I switch that with Dampen Magic. Um, that I had on for a speed run the other night. So let me switch that. Oops. I put on here as a Templar, it's your job to keep up Power of the Light. Not just for the down at the bottom, not just for the major fracture, major breach, which reduces their physical and spell resistance for nine seconds. That's a that's a biggie in itself. But basically Templars run it for the passive. If you look under the Dawn's Wrath skill line itself, uh, casting an ability grants minor sorcery to you and your group for 20 seconds, increasing their spell damage by 10%. So that you want to at least do every 20 seconds for the passive, um, but then you also want to try to put it on all of the things you can put it on, like Ohms and the protectors and the minis when they come up. You know, just pop it on everything. Uh, it does take stamina though. And then the classic Breath of Life. This is not there. Let's see, we've got Healing Springs, and this is uh, Radiating Regeneration. Yes, Radiating Regeneration. Just to help get that Gosmer out. Gosmer is only for one second. So, let's go look at the inventory. Gosmer, when you heal yourself or an ally, you grant them major evasion for one second, reducing their damage from area attacks by 25%. So, you're not really like healing a lot of people, but they are getting your heals when you use your radiating regeneration, um, when you use your springs anywhere near them. But basically, you want to put on altar if you're doing Gosmer. Overflowing altar. So then I'll show you, you know, when I show you the actual video, you run up front to the Ohms area and you put down Gosmer and that will get everybody with, I mean, you put down altar and that'll get everybody with Gosmer. So the back bar is altar. Instead of orbs, I like shards because they la the, I think the synergy lasts longer. You can pop them out really quickly for the tank. You don't have to wait for the orb to float over there and hope it go, you know, gets there quick enough or whatever. And on top of that, again, we're going for the passive. Um, if you pick shards instead of orbs, you get spell resistance 
and my favorite is you get minor protection for six seconds which reduces your damage by eight percent so whenever you use that you know you get uh, reduced damage so I choose shards and then here I put on elemental drain because you do need that for ohms. As a front kiter, you need to get ohms with it, and you need to get your protectors that come out on your side close to you with it. And then, um, if you have the time, of course, get the mini bosses when they come around. But the main thing is ohms and the protectors on your side. Extended Ritual, you'll definitely need that. It's your purge and the tank's purge, because you are the tank healer. So at the end, at the execute for the fire, you need the purge and the blockade of storms. As an um, ultimate war horn you can use if you go up near the group enough you think, or barrier is a sure thing. This time I don't just use it for the extra recovery, I use barrier in a selfish way. There's certain times where you'll get like a jump or a spit and the cone and a kite, you'll get like three or four mechanics and you will almost die that's when I pop my barrier to save myself or save the tank if he needs it. Also, if you're just beginning a progression and the tank is getting a lot of um, jumps on him, they are very hard to keep them healed through. A uh, thing you can choose is solo disturbance. And you know, when the tank gets a jump, you can just put that on him or put that on the group. If they're having problems like during kite phase, staying alive or something, it will just reduce their damage taken. So I'm just going to stick with the Warhorn. And those are the skills I use. And that's how I put them on my bar. For potions, I use the Tri-Stats because you're definitely, basically you're going to want that health, that instant health when you almost die. You can just pop it and live. Um, I don't really have much of a recovery problem because I will use the Atronach Mundus, which is increasing my recovery. Let's see, food-wise, I use Bewitched Sugar Skulls for the extra stamina. I have to put all health glyphs on my armor in order to get to the right health, which you want it to be, I have to go get some in my bank, you want it to be around 20, 300. You don't really want it. You, I mean, less. I haven't done less than 2200. So you want it to at least be in the 22 something, like 225. Um, magic is my magic is always around 30,000 or 31 if you can. But that doesn't matter as much because, like I said, you're not there to heal the group. You don't need a ton of magic because your heals aren't going to be super strong. That's fine. Uh, you also want to make sure that. You know, your recovery is good enough. I like it to be around 23 or 24. I know that's extra high, but you'll need it because um, you can't really get off a light attacks. You're literally moving every second, so it's hard to get a light attack off. So I right, have high recovery, especially if you're doing zins and you're using a lot more skills all the time with the dots. Okay, I just visited Asylum Sanctorium to show you guys the arena. And just to give you some more tips here in person, this is it. That's Olms. These little squares here are where the protectors come out. They have three spots here at entrance. It's, this is entrance where you walk into the arena. Exit is behind Olms. That's what they call exit is that wall over there. You have two protector squares in the middle that sit under Olms. And then you have three protector squares here at the exit. So the protector will come out of these little nipples and it will go to one of these squares here. It's random, so whenever you see the protector coming out of your side as a front kite, you have to say protector entrance, or I just say, you know, exit or middle, protector middle, so all the DPS can know to go ahead and get that protector down. That's a very important thing. Uh, when you kite on the front, you go from this light that light over there, there's a line. The tank sits like right there. And this is your area back here behind him. You go like a half circle from one light to the other light. And it's basically you just kite in the same spot over and over. Occasionally, if you need to, you can run across the middle here on this line. 
make sure that if you do have to run across the middle here, that you go behind Ohm's feet because Ohm's will be standing, you know, like right here. You don't want to go around the front of him because when he does his steam, you'll get caught in it and die. So if you run through the middle, just try to go behind his feet in case he starts that steam or something. You're going to want to catch the kites starting at one of these corners, this one, you know, usually. It's important that you don't tuck into this far corner like this because he Ohms won't register you there and the tank will get the jump. You want to kind of stand out a little away from it and you don't want to be right on this wall either because if you roll dodge or something you'll get stuck on these pipes here and you'll die in this stuff. So it's best just to stay at about this nipple length away from the wall and like about here. I don't really want to go much closer or much farther back. Also I suggest that you zoom in a little with your joystick. If you're really far out you'll get these trees and stuff in the way sometimes behind you here when you're moving around and it'll impair your vision. You won't see if you got a jump on you or something. So if you just go a little forward with your joystick vision you can you know avoid that. So when he first spits, he's going to spit on you and you catch it here and then you just roll out of it. Um, if Felms is not up at the very beginning, you know, you can just, it doesn't really matter as much what you do up here because you just only have the spits to contend with. But after a few minutes, once Felms is up, you want to make sure that you catch your ohm spit and then step aside right out of it, stand right next to the, as close as you can get without being in it and wait for your films to jump. Once films jumps on you, then you want to go ahead and work your way over to the other side here and get ready for you know the, the same thing, the spit and the jump. When I first started doing it, you know, let's say I was over here and I caught the spit and the jump, I would just get out of it and I would be like right here behind tank and this was a nice place to be. I could see the tank, I could see both sides, you know, I can do what I needed to do. But I realized that once I caught uh, the films jump here in the middle, you either have to roll right or left. And let me put my, let's say this big old circle is the films jump. You have to get out of it. So you're over here. But on either side, you only have a tiny little space here to work in. And you're going to be screwed once you get a spit or if you get the kite and you have to go to the end of it here and you're stuck. You have nowhere else to go. That will make you, force you to go across the middle, which is dangerous, you know. So that's why I don't suggest catching ever any jumps here in the middle if you don't have to, because it just will shorten your area to work in. So try to catch them here on the left or the right. Once you get your two spits, your films jump all stacked up right here, you'll have this whole area here for kiting, for doing whatever you need, and then you'll be over here on the other side ready to catch your next jumps. So once I'm here and I catch my spits and I catch my jumps and I run over here, I just like to throw down a springs, a shard, I do my ritual and then I have to come out here and you pop down your blood altar right there in the middle so it hits people. So your blood altar from here and then you have the warden's blood altar uh, more up there. And then together they'll always be on the group, giving them the Gosmer and the Spell Power Cure. And once I place that stuff, it's usually when Ohms does his steam breath. When he's doing that, it's safe to run up here and put down your altar and stuff, as long as you're not supposed to be catching the Felms jump. Now, at first I was like, well, how do I know when I can, you know, run up in the middle and put my altar down and when I can't? How do I know when Felms is going to be jumping? Well, it's the same thing as like a back kiter. You can tell by watching the big circle on the ground. Once he jumps on you and he leaves this circle, it'll only be here for however many seconds before it fades away. If you are doing your stuff and you want to run out here and put down an altar, if you look over there and you still see his big circle there, then you can run out and put your altar down real quick and run back. But as soon as you see that circle, let's pretend like that's his circle. As soon as you see that fade away, like if you're doing your stuff and you want to run out there, but oh look, it's gone. I shouldn't run out there. I need to be ready for the jump. You know, and what I do to get ready, I put my shield on. There you go, I'm ready. As soon as he jumps on me, I get out of it. And then you can go up into the front 
if you need to because you have the films jump. Sometimes you'll get two films jumps as a front kiter due to just some other, you know, like off tank or maybe the back kiter, something they did. Um, but that's something you can't really prepare for. You know, like a few times I have ran across the middle after I got my films jump and then I actually got a second jump that was just out of nowhere and it landed like on the tank because I was in the middle. So, but usually you're safe to, after you get your one films jump to go into the middle. You are the tank healer as well as the kiter. So it's your job to keep the tank, you know, healed and his resources up and to keep an eye on him, like I said, if he gets jumps or something. Usually they don't need, you know, much. Like if you're in Zins, the only thing you give them is a healing spring because with the Zen staff you'll have on your master staff and the master staff gives them resources 117 magic and stamina every second for four seconds so if you're doing Zen's you basically just give them a springs you won't have on your shards you'll have your ritual that you can help them you know keep on them but you won't have on the altar or anything so the tank, you know, you, you have Breath of Life, you have Healing Springs, you know, they don't really need that much because they're a tank and, you know. Um, when the Ohms jumps over here, if you're on this side, try to be on the entrance side and peek around the corner and give these people a Healing Springs or something just to try to help them out. You know, something like this, just to try to keep them alive in that corner while they're getting their uh, kites and jumps and stuff. I'm going to show you my Zen setup real quick. I'm not going to switch my outfit because that's kind of redundant. I use the Master's Restoration Staff. I use the Zen's Inferno Staff. And then the same helmet, and then the same martial knowledge jewelry. I just put Zins on my body with a martial knowledge piece to make up for that other staff. So I basically have, well, actually, you know what? That's not true. People say to do the master staff, you know, and I do it always. But actually, the last times I did Zins in here, I used the Zins restoration staff, and I'll tell you why. I know that. Is something you really shouldn't do is double the Zins because you're getting rid of the Masters, you know, recovery. But in here, and you'll see once you do it, in here you're literally moving so much, so fast, it's like you barely have a second to pause. And when you're catching jumps, like if you're getting a jump here and you have to start going this way out of them, but you'll see a protector pop out of here and start to go over here, or you'll see the boss here real quick, a mini boss, and you only have a split second while he's next to you to pop zins on him and some, you know, dots. If it's on your back bar, cause see like here on my front bar where my shield is and stuff, when I'm catching my jumps and I'm running at my shield, I can't just switch over to my back bar, put zins on him, switch over again, and make sure I have my shield and everything in time, cause you literally have like a second. So to have Zins on your front bar it made it possible to get the Zins dots on things I wouldn't have been able to if I had the master staff on. So if I have Zins on this resto bar, in that one second while I'm running away I can pop Zins on things really quickly. Also during kites, when I need to have my heal bar on for healing people, healing the tank, healing myself with shields healing people over here. I can also, while I'm running around doing that, pop Zins on the things I see without having to try to worry about switching back and forth. Um, so this is the only trial where I will double bar my Zins and it's really efficient that way, I feel. For moves, I'll show you my moves real quick. I keep the same here on the front bar, the damn magic you have to have or you'll die. This will save you if you get the double or triple mechanics. If you get a jump and you get the cone and you're in two or three of them, if you keep popping the shield, it will save you, whereas if you don't have your shield, you'll die. This you have to keep on. This you won't have. You won't be healing anyone with it. 
Uh, this will switch to reflective light. It's something I like to have on my front bar because you can get three targets at once with the one move. So you can get, you know, the protector and ohms and maybe a mini boss if they're all together. And then you can just pop zins on them. On the back bar, you have the normal zin setup. So you keep the blockade, you keep the ritual. You gotta keep elemental drain on for ohms and protectors. Degeneration is a dot. Soul splitting trap is a dot. So that's your one, two, three dots. Plus the blockade is the two staff dots. So that's the five dots plus Ellie. So this is how I set my Zins bar up for kiting, asylum sanctorium. As you can see, the only heals you have basically is breath of life for the oh crap, I need to heal the tank or someone heal. You have springs that you're gonna put on the tank. You don't have any shards or any bubbles or anything like that. Um, you just have your Zins dots. So you don't have to worry about running up with your altar or anything. Basically, this fight, if you're in a Zins, is going to all be about dots, keeping the dots on the mini bosses on an Ohms. On the protectors, you don't have to worry about putting Zins on the protectors. Just do your um, power of the light and on these close ones to you, try to get the Ellie drain on them. Those are the most important things for them. But for the mini bosses and for Ohms, you want to try to keep Zins and as many dots as you can up on them.